Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, young virgin mother and child, sleep in heaven be In heavenly peace. <laughs> Jumped yeah. about four octaves there. Yeah, I was, it's a, you know, it's a switch up at the end, you know. Yeah. Very uh, nice. A plot I, twist. Was doing, I was doing a, <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a thing. <laughs> right. Anyway, hello, hi, welcome. Name of the show is Politics. Although I call it Politics and the title of this episode is the Marvels. My name is Presh. And I'm Ty. And I was Cap King Triton of the Undersea World oh. when in the Grade 3 play. Oh. I was the lead of the, the play. Oh, wow. Right. Huh. Which I think was racial profiling. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> I went to the school in the Northwest province, right? Yes. Right. Uh, just like at, I went, I, was, I lived there for a year and a half. Mm. So Grade 3 at and like halfway of grade four. Right. And uh, the second half of grade four, I moved to Joburg. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So in grade three, like we had a white teacher mm. and everyone in the class was black except me. Oh. So <laughs> she's like, all right, who are you going to choose to be the lead? She looks around <laughs> and she just points at me. And she's like, we didn't even have singing trials or like acting trials. She was just like, how about you? Why don't you be the, <laughs> the lead of the play? <laughs> oh, no. You know, at the time, you don't think about it. But in hindsight, yeah, it's very clear that that was the r- racial profiling going on. But anyway, that was one of the, the songs I sang. Oh. Like... Uh, not alone, yeah. but like I was the, you know, like lead the, of the song. You nice, know? yeah. Silent Night. That's oh, I, nice. I should say this was a Christian school I went to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they made us fucking read the Bible on Mondays and Fridays every week <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> well, no, not us read it. Like we would go sit in the hall and somebody would read it on the, the stage. They uh, would like, yeah. Just, they would read like. Passages uh, and like talk about it. Oh, they talk about it as well. Okay, yeah. they wouldn't just read the no, because <laughs> they wanted they want you to apply it to your life, right? But I'm not a Christian. So <laughs> I'm not even. I don't believe in anything. I'm an atheist. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and you're like grade three. Yes, I was an atheist before I went to school. Like <laughs> in grade R. The reason being, I used to watch TV, hmm. and my parents they take me away to the temple <laughs> like i hate this i hate this shit you know <laughs> so yes I, I hated god and uh, now i feel nothing because you know yeah it doesn't exist fair enough it's like hating darth vader oh <laughs> you know <laughs> it's just he's a fictional character there's nothing anyway but yeah i know that that's the first song i sang all the way through oh think yeah. about it well kind of what it was a little bit that you missed. What? It's okay. So it, it goes like, Round your virgin mother and child, Holy infant so tender and mild. Oh, stop. I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not gonna say that line you just said. <laughs> an infant so mild. <laughs> why, why are you looking at an infant, bro? <laughs> and what does mild mean in this context? <laughs> it could mean tender and mild. Tender. You call the small child tender. All right. It could mean that Sorry. you're a cannibal. <laughs> yes, I'm glad I didn't, I didn't uh, say that line. I'm not a pedophile, thank you. Although certain people in this room may be. The fact that you knew that line <laughs> and you had it locked and loaded. Uh, anyway, we should start the show. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I'll blame you for bringing up your third grade play. Right. So anyway, clean up from last week. Uh, we are talking about the requirements to be in the House of Representatives. Yes. And you were saying, like, can I run from South, South Africa? Africa? Yes. But my point was, if you move there mm. from South Africa, you can become one. Not if you are in South Africa. <laughs> right. I yes. think we, we just misunderstood each other. Right? Yeah. So I found the necessary rule. Okay. It says, no person shall be a representative who shall not have attained to the age of 25 years. So... 
uh, there's an age limit <laughs> <laughs> which you don't pass <laughs> that's the that's the the most pressing reason why you can't be yeah. <laughs> in the house of representatives right yes and been 7 years a citizen of the united states and, okay uh, I'm just counting here. Yeah. You have zero. Yeah. <laughs> You're about seven years away from from that goal. <laughs> so you're zero for two. Yes. Okay. And who shall, when elected, be an inhabitant of the state in which he shall be chosen? So oh. you, you have to live in whatever state uh, that you are the representative for. So zero for three then. Well. <laughs> so you, by the time you've uh, completed the first two requirements you you could <laughs> you could yes maybe <laughs> like the, the third requirement leads on from the first two ah but yeah yeah okay yeah so, anyway uh, i i couldn't be a representative oh i need more i need, oh. <laughs> I, need i need to be a senator <laughs> uh in the senator or like a uh, supreme court judge those okay. are <laughs> like uh, have you looked up the rules for those Nah, I don't care. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go there and get in on my moxie. I'm going to be like <laughs> You know, you know like the these like all oh, these stories of like these older people. Yes. They're like you just got to march in there and ask for a job. Yeah. And you know, uh, you got to impress them with your moxie. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's me for senator <laughs> of a, a country I don't love in. <laughs> Well, that's how Donald Trump got elected. Fuck <laughs> 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 it, right? Yeah. Anyway, can we go into the news of the week? Yep. So, after a grueling 118 days on strike, SAG AFTRA has officially reached a tentative agreement on a new three-year contract with studios, a move that has heralded the end of the 2023 actors' strike. Oh. Okay. Any thoughts so far? <laughs> I was going to carry on reading then uh, I looked at you and you looked like you were going to say something. I I wasn't going to say anything. It's just I was thinking that that's nice. All right. Probably. The sag <laughs> why <What>, why probably? <laughs> It depends on if they've like stooped to certain demands. Well, if they're going to accept it, you'd assume that they Yeah. I mean, if the union is going to accept it, you assume that <laughs> it, they probably haven't yeah. stooped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean stoop like um how do i the government so, gave in not the government the studios gave in to their demands uh no 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 like the actors so like the the sag after our were um like saying oh we want these specific things right and then the studios were like okay we'll give you half of those things and they were like all right fine we'll take that no that's what i'm saying okay if the union accepted it mm. it would have to be a you know a all good a good deal okay. not maybe not all mm. just something that's acceptable to the union right okay so okay <laughs> it wouldn't be bad it would be something acceptable okay. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, all right the sag after tv slash theatrical committee approved the agreement in a unanimous vote wednesday Sag after announced the strike will end at 12:01 a.m. Thursday. On Friday the deal will go to the union's national board for approval. The performance union announced the provisional agreement Wednesday after about 2 weeks of renewed negotiations. The development came not long before a deadline of 5 p.m. that the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers had set for the union to give their answer on whether they had a deal. The union is so far providing some details of the agreement more of which will likely emerge in the next few days prior to the union's ratification vote. So okay. that's when the un- the members of the union come together and say like whether they find it acceptable or not. Okay. And yeah. once again, <laughs> if the union bosses deemed it acceptable, it's highly likely that the members would also. Hmm. Okay. Right. Makes and sense. I, they could, again, they could overturn it, but I'm just saying it's unlikely. Unlikely. Yeah. Uh So the union said the pact is valued at over 1 billion and includes pay increases higher than what other unions received this year. Oh. A streaming participation bonus that's in quotation marks. So oh, oh no. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Mm. Um, and regulations on AI. The tentative deal also includes higher caps on health and pension funds, compensation bumps for back- background performers. Uh, where am I? Oh, <laughs> it's a very good question. In a statement, uh, okay. 
When negotiations restart on October 2nd for the first time since SAG-AFTRA called its work stoppage in July, hopes were high in the industry that Hollywood's largest union could come to terms with major companies quickly, just like they had in the final days of the writers' negotiations. On Saturday, the studios presented what the union characterizes as the company's last, best and final overarching offer. Still, the two sides kept swapping offers after. <laughs> Which, <laughs> whoever wrote this article is also very spicy. You know? yeah. <laughs> They're getting in some jabs, like some very yeah. like slight ones. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not... <laughs> uh, all right. It's just minor shade. Yes. <sighs> when the union's previous contract expired in mid-July and SAG-AFTRA went out on strike, many outstanding issues were left on the table. Hmm. Ground rules for self-taped virtual editions and major increases to health and pension contribution caps that have not been changed since the 1980s. Meanwhile, as the entertainment business continues to experience a period of contraction, major companies look to preserve some measure of flexibility and cost control. SAG after strike coming as it did amid, amid an ongoing writer's strike in July gave the union an unusual amount of leverage early on in its talks with the AMT. Almost immediately most remaining unionized U.S. productions that were operating without right to shut down, including Deadpool 3 and Venom. And as the months of work stoppage is stretched on, the strategist at the Milton Institute has estimated that the strikes have cost the California economy alone at least $6 billion. That's insane. So, yeah, thoughts? I mean, it's good that they finally reached an agreement of some description. And we can get back to you know, uh, production and that kind of stuff. But, um, oh, I've, I've lost what my butt was. I don't even remember. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just nice that they've reached an agreement, I'd say. All right, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, our next news story is, uh, I forget the name. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but there's like a, a movie starring John Cena mm. and Wiley Coyote. And Wiley Coyote? Yes, you know him. Yeah. He always chases... Oh, he chases always, the like, road. No, right. he always does like these traps at these like... <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> over the top plans to try and trap the roadrunner. But the roadrunner <laughs> is too smart, he's <laughs> too quick, you know. And his plans always fall apart. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> John Cena was doing a movie with Wiley Coyote. You know? Okay. Two big stars, <laughs> yeah. their first time collaborating. You know, uh, it's like, you know, everyone wanted to see De Niro and Pacino in a movie too. Yeah. <laughs> like, they were in Godfather too, but they were, you know, in separate timelines. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pacino obviously played Michael, mm. and De Niro played his father as a young man. Yeah. So they were in like flashbacks. Yeah. So they never met. Yeah. So for many years, people like. We need a De Niro Pacino picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and very similarly, you know. John Cena. Yeah, Wiley Coyote. Uh, John Cena, Wiley Coyote. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the, that's what the, you know, the internet, the, in, the whole world actually, I shouldn't say the internet has been asking for. Yeah. Where's the Wiley Coyote, <laughs> John Cena collaboration? And apparently they made the movie. Okay. But David Zaslav has chosen to shelve the movie uh, okay. because it's more profitable as a tax write off. Oh. So this is the same thing that happened last year with Batgirl. All oh, right, you yeah. recall? Yeah, I remember that. They shelved Batgirl, and yeah, this has just <laughs> never been released. So it's <sighs> it sucks for the the people who worked on it. Yeah, I'm sure they are proud of the work that they did, and they're like, oh, I want to show off, you know, mm. the special effects I did, or the costume I made, yeah. or the actors are proud of the acting they did, or whatever, right? Yeah, and then they just like. Uh, Shut it no. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Your hard work was for nothing. <laughs> right. Which, you know. That really sucks for them. I assume as a creative, that's very heartbreaking. Mm. Uh, and also, like, if you thought you did excellent work, mm. that could possibly lead to further opportunities. Yeah. That thing is just shelved. You could, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not getting the, like, exposure that you thought you would, uh, you know. I wonder if they allow them to use them in like portfolio pieces mm, i don't know yeah. all i know is they're never allowed to monetize it yeah that's what shelving it means yeah they can't like just chuck it on their 
a streaming sure, service yeah. or you know whatever yeah it has to <laughs> be yes. like out of the Stop. public yeah so i don't know if giving them portions for their their real would mm. would do it yeah it would break that but i've you know yeah. no idea i'll look it up and come back next week <laughs> and unfortunately those are the only new stories of the week uh my internet has been down <laughs> so <laughs> i haven't been able to do the you know as much mm. research as i usually do yeah but uh those are just two things i saw this week i've got some news yes um i don't know if you remember i mentioned starship the elon musk rocket the really big one that uh launched in like isn't it starlink no no uh starlink is the satellites all right starship is the biggest rocket of all time Oh, the one that broke. Yeah, the one that <laughs> exploded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, I recall that. Sorry. Oh, it launched. We were April. recording at my parents' house because yeah. I don't know what problem we have in. Yeah, but <laughs> but we were recording. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they they've got round two ready to go, and um, currently they are well. They're waiting on the Federal Aviation Authority to give them a license. so that they can launch the rocket right wow yeah so you're saying the woke uh, <laughs> <laughs> the woke fa the woke fa is trying to bring down uh, our hero Elon Musk <laughs> it's just so unfair the haters the haters are trying to bring him down i hate it sucks you know have they ever built a company you know he invented the uh, electric car he yes. invented paypal yes he invented twitter yes right <laughs> What did you what have you ever done? You just <laughs> the bloody FA fuck you. <laughs> anyway, carry on. So, um they've been waiting on it for a while, right? They waited on it. Uh they they've had the rocket ready to go for probably like a month and a half, two months now. Mm. Uh but the FAA has been doing investigations about the first rocket um because they obviously don't want that to happen again. Where yep. like what to get fucked then how dare they how dare they try to prevent a, a future breakage you make me sick there they <laughs> carry on so um yeah they've they completed the investigation about uh two weeks ago and um now the the biggest well so in the past week the biggest thing has been getting environmental clearance because i don't know if you know this right but uh it's not great to have a rocket blast down protected wetlands yeah. oh i don't know that yeah i know you're saying it like i should know that but <laughs> <laughs> i definitely did not know that <laughs> you, you said like oh you may not know this like in a sarcastic way and yeah. then i don't know that you shouldn't do that I would have launched a rocket over <laughs> wetlands <laughs> if nobody told me. Well, I'm telling you now. All right, good. I should <laughs> I should uh, put uh, I should call off that order for <laughs> for, for all those rocket. rockets <laughs> sent to my house on the wetlands. All right. But so we're kind of currently as it stands, we are kind of watching SpaceX with, you know. Specs. Yes. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Uh, which is you know the company that's launching the rocket yes to figure out if they've gotten the license because it'll only be published i think like next wednesday or something so we're watching well we were watching them to figure out if they'd gotten the license to launch the rocket right who does that you, make sense who are you watching spacex spacex how are you watching them um they had a camera on them yeah basically It was just a guy waiting for a phone call, <laughs> or he's just refreshing his email. <laughs> What are you talking about? You were watching them waiting for it. <laughs> Explain further. So, these people who have literally dedicated their entire careers to watching rocket launches and that kind of stuff. Wait. Yeah. What's their career? it's like photography or oh, streaming okay, okay. or that kind of stuff. You said dedicated their career to watching it. I'm like that is, doesn't seem very profitable. Yeah. <laughs> you lost me just watching rockets go up. <laughs> that makes more sense photography and such. Yeah. yeah. So um they they have like so the photographers like 
some people take aerial photographs. So they like, they fly planes over and then they take photographs out of the plane and you can see all the stuff moving around the star base is what it's called. Mm -hmm. The, the place where they launch the rockets. Um, other people have set up like remote cameras in Starbase with obviously with Spax's permission so that uh, they can watch things moving around and um, we've seen that the flight termination system has been armed which probably means nothing right but basically it means that um, when the rocket goes up if something goes wrong they press that button and it explodes so that you know it doesn't go out of control and hit something right but <laughs> I had a very different thought I thought like <laughs> they wouldn't want you know somebody to steal their technology so they'd rather blow it up then <laughs> or I thought like <laughs> in case like uh, an Autobot or like <laughs> they try to steal their rocket <laughs> like, you're never getting our rockets boom <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's what that's the first idea that came to me you're like Oh, so he doesn't hit anything. Like, yeah. I never thought about that. That thought never crossed my mind. <laughs> that it might hit something. <laughs> All right. But basically, they arm it only when they know that they're going to launch it. Like, basically, at the latest possible time. It's already armed. Yeah. So, so could it blow up in the uh, facility? It is possible if something goes wrong. That's why they take as long as possible to arm it so that they basically arm it and then send the rocket away, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so uh, conservative estimates are like the 15th, which is this Wednesday for it to launch. Uh, some are saying the 17th, which is Friday. Um, anyway, listener, if you're into rockets and uh, you want to watch the second test of Starship, now you know. Watch, watch all of SpaceX's stuff from Wednesday until Friday, 24 hours a day. And, and you would might love, see it. I would love it yeah. if it blew up again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the first one. Like, <laughs> Realistically, it like, will. <laughs> because it was maybe our third or fourth episode yeah. where the first one blew up. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> we're collecting blown up rockets yeah. like Infinity Gems on the show. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, based on what you've said, this whole story, yes. I have one conclusion. Okay. And that's Elon Musk needs to get down there and investigate that rocket. <laughs> you know, you said the, the thing system. The flight termination the system. The termination system. Yes. He needs to get down there and make sure that it's, you know, working properly. Yes. And if it blows up, you know, <laughs> that's his, uh, you know, that's the haters fault because they... They sabotaged it. Yes. Yes. True. Like, Even <laughs> a perfect rocket, it's not, it's not his fault that it blow up that is true yeah. anyway is that the all your news uh we've also got that it's been confirmed in another rocket story funnily enough oh my god also spacex the rocket man over here yeah all right <laughs> um, we've we've gotten news that an x-37b will be launched in december on a falcon heavy uh okay yeah that that meant nothing to you mm. uh falcon heavy is the world's most powerful operational rocket as it stands um, and the X-37B is an experimental space plane uh, so basically they're gonna throw the X-37B as high as they possibly can and have it re-enter its atmosphere and see if it survives which I think is kind you of... You know cool. who's the rocket man? Elton John. Elton John. Elton John. But there was a thing a few years ago where Trump called Kim Jong Un the rocket man <laughs> because he had a bunch of rockets. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Anyways, think about that while you were <laughs> while you were waffling about <laughs> whatever you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but the thing is, this is too intellectual for our podcast. This, all this rocket talk. <laughs> we, we need a like. Uh, you know, this is for working class people, not your hoity toity upper class people like you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We, we down to earth, we wear overalls, we, you know, we're chewing tobacco. You That's wear us. overalls? Yeah, not now. <laughs> uh, I'm not in my work clothes now. Oh, I see. But okay. I'm a working class person, unlike you. Oh. You, 
listeners you can't see it but he's wearing one of the outfits from the hunger games it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> one of the really intricate yeah. fancy ones <laughs> he's like stanley tucci <laughs> yeah yeah stanley tucci was great in that movie mm. anyway yes uh to simplify it yes thank big, you <laughs> thank you <laughs> big rocket throws paper plane really high paper plane flies back down to earth Oh well, that's not so bad it's a paper plane. Yeah, but it's not going to do damage. Yeah, this is a really big heavy metal paper plane. Well, <laughs> you should have explained yeah. it better then. You should have said that it throws a metal plane and a metal plane comes back. That would have <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A metal plane. It's, it's paper paper is harmless. That's why I don't believe it should win in rock paper scissors against the rock. The paper does nothing. It covers the rock but the rock still. Listen to me. Yeah. A scissors cuts up paper. Yes. That's destruction. Yes. A rock you can like destroy the scissors. Yes. Break it into pieces. Yeah. The other one covers it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's <laughs> that's it. It doesn't do it's anything. Not, it's, <laughs> it's high with a rock. Mm. I'd be like, all right. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> We need Dwayne Johnson's view on this whole thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying to think of oh, <laughs> the lead character from Atlanta. Oh, paper boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's his rap name. That's not his real name. It's his parents are <laughs> They call him paper boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, paper boy, paper boy, cuz I'm all about that paper boy. You, you see what he's doing. Yeah, I get it. The first one it's one word, paper yes. boy. Then the second one is paper, paper comma boy. You know? Very interesting. I had to go to rap genius to find out. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, Why did you just say the same word? <laughs> I did some research. <laughs> okay, yeah. Anyway, that's my news for this week. All right. So can we get into the context of the movie? Yes. It's 30 minutes in. Yeah. Too much waffling. Ah. And I blame Emily Yu. Emily Yu. All right. <laughs> okay. Getting so hot. Yeah. Too hot. <sighs> so I'm going to start in an unorthodox place. Okay, and that's Fawcett Comics. Oh, why is that? Um they were one of the small comic companies and then they did something. Mm. And it'd be interesting if you could say what that <laughs> thing was that you know, and you don't just say something. They created Captain Marvel. Mm. Mm. Right. Carol Danvers, yes. Oh, nice. Okay. Is that it? Uh yeah, that's the best I've got. All right. Yeah. No, they created Captain Marvel, hmm. the character currently known as Shazam. Oh. Right. Oh, yeah, we went over. Th- yes, that's yeah. why I'm saying you. <laughs> you even listen to this podcast. What do you? <laughs> It's like <laughs> are you nitching over there? <laughs> this is the thing, listeners, I'm on one side of the desk, he's on the other side. I can't see what he's doing with the one hand. So he could be nitching, you could be <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He could be playing a uh, snake on a Nokia 3310. There's so many things he could be doing. But yeah, he definitely isn't paying attention. <laughs> but yes, yes. There was I'm not sure if you heard of this guy, but there was a very popular at the time mm. character named Superman. Oh. No, And who's that? This is the <laughs> problem. People keep telling me he's not famous. Mm-hmm. That he's not the number one guy. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> So, it makes sense that you don't know who is, mm. right? But he was very popular. Right, I see. Okay. And then uh Fawcett Comics made this ripoff called Captain Marvel, <laughs> right. who became even more popular than Superman. <laughs> At one point, he was pop- more popular than both Superman and Batman. Wow! Which you know, probably upset DC. Yes, so they sued them. <laughs> 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 Frankly, they sued them out of existence because oh. in a few years, Fawcett shut down, shut right. down, and DC got a lot of their characters. Right. But during that lawsuit which took years and years mm. Marvel created a character called, <laughs> called Captain Marvel. <laughs> and like now they have the copyright for it. Right. So every couple of years they had to create a new Captain Marvel series. Okay. But some of them didn't really sell well. Mm. So again that's why they were shut down. Yeah. They had to start a new one. Right. <laughs> so the name Captain Marvel has been held by a number of <laughs> characters because of this right right makes sense now the first one was marvel mm. 
<laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was a high level Kree officer. Oh, right. And oh, he was okay. sent to spy on Earth. Hmm. And when he gets here, he falls in love with the planet and he realizes that the Kree are evil. Uh, so he stops working for them and he becomes like a, a Earth hero. Right. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of heroes, yeah. but <laughs> one of Earth heroes. Right. Right. Okay. The second Captain Marvel was Monica Rambeau. Hey. Right. Okay. She was a police officer before getting the Captain Marvel powers. Yes. Um, her origin in the MCU is way different. Yeah, She's uh, the daughter of Maria. Yeah. Uh, but in the comic, she was a police woman. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. A cap. A. Uh, yes. All cops are bastards. Oh. Right. oh so, okay. Some people say all cops are bad. Yeah. But uh, that's what I thought. You no, know, that's the that's for babies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's the, you know, like there's a, you know, they do like baby books. Okay. Of like you know, there's classic books like yes, like Goldilocks, and Treasure Island. Oh, like yeah. a long big book, right? Yeah. They condense that into like a baby book, but yes. like pictures and stuff. Yeah. All cops are bad is that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you've done. <laughs> it's the baby book. Yes. Uh, okay. Right. Well, I guess socialists say that. Hmm. And further to the left. Sorry if this offends. Okay. Right. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> the third Captain Marvel was named Guinness Vell. Okay. He was the son of Marvel. Right. Oh, I see. Not okay. in the sense of bad sex and bad birth. Oh. He died. Obviously, Marvel died. Right. So they harvested his DNA. <laughs> oh. And, and they grew this. Uh, a new Vel. Yeah, Guinness Vel. Oh. But it's not a. It's not a clone. Right. Because they took like DNA from his lover. Oh, I and, see. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's it's their child. Right. Right. And he became well. Monica Rambeau was still alive. Yeah. Her name changed to Photon. I think. Oh. Right. Right. Okay. Which I think was supposed to be her name in this movie, mm. but nobody says Photon, do they? I think um, uh, the younger girl suggests says Photon. It. Yeah, like she suggests it as one of the names. Hmm. But I might need to go back and relook at that. All right, but well, whatever. The third guy took <laughs> Captain, <laughs> the name Captain Marvel. Right. right. Uh, he like dies. Okay. Then the fourth Captain Marvel. Her name is Phyla Vell. Okay. She's the sister of Guinness Vell and the daughter of Marvel. Oh. oh, okay. Again, she was grown in a lab. She. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, you know, like uh, how we as humans would think about it. It's, yeah. Uh, they took DNA of two people and made a baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a thing nowadays. All right. Yeah. Lab babies. Is that true? Yeah. Although they don't, like, incubate them separately. They still... Um, like, have you ever heard of test tube babies? That's what I was going to say. Is this what a test tube baby is? Yeah. Because uh, when I was, like, in grade 10, mm. the English set book yeah. was... Uh, I can't remember the name. Mm. But, like, somebody was being made fun of for being a test tube baby. Oh, no. <laughs> like, all these kids on the playground pointed at him and said, Test tube baby, test tube baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being a test tube baby, but... <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh, kids are fucking brutal. Fruit. That is true. Oh my god. Kids are terrible. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? Uh, test your babies. It, it's like, it's a thing that humans can do. It's just not common. Not yeah. as common as the Cree do, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> you're well aware of the Cree's, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, medical stuff. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. The fifth Captain Marvel was a Skrull sleep agent named Knur. Knur. I'm going to spell that. Okay. K H N apostrophe N R. Knur. Yeah. Right. Anyway, uh, do you know the Skrulls? Yes. They're shapeshifters. Yeah. Right. But some of them are placed in deep cover. Hmm. So, like, they use a machine to make them forget their memories yeah and they believe they genuinely believe they're that person yeah right and then at the moment they're needed they can be activated yeah and they'll regain all their scroll memories mm. and then it like kind of 
what's the word, like binds with the new knowledge they acquired as the the person that they yes, were. Yeah. and they, you know, launch their attack. Yeah. So right. the scroll have a bunch of people just sleepers waiting, mm. you know, to be activated. Yeah. But they just go along with their lives, not realizing that they're a, a scroll. Yeah. Right. So something happens here where he like there's an error and his scroll personality is lost. Oh. And he just becomes Marvel. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, copying Marvel. Yeah. Right. He was given Marvel's DNA, mm. which apparently is how the, <laughs> a lot of them are created, <laughs> yeah. right? He was given Marvel's DNA to like replicate. Okay. Right? And the Marvel personality is what's left there. Mm. So he's just literally Marvel again. <laughs> just, because because okay. he has the body of Marvel and the mind of Marvel, so. He's basically a Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think he dies as well. Okay. The sixth cool. Captain Marvel is a guy named Novar. Okay. He has no connection to the other Captain Marvels. <laughs> like, he's just like... He just liked the name. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty sick. <laughs> I'm going to use it. <laughs> cool. I'll be Captain Marvel too. Yeah. Why not? Well, if it's open, you yeah. know, <laughs> everybody else is dead. I might as well. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, the seventh Captain Marvel was Carol Danvers. Okay. For a long time, she was a superhero with the name Miss Marvel. Yes. But like okay. uh, the sixth Captain Marvel, she also has no connection to the previous Captain Marvels. Right. Although she is aware of him. Oh. Okay. I don't think the previous guy was aware that they existed. Yeah. Yeah. I think he just chose Captain Marvel. He didn't know who they were. Yeah. I, I've never read these comics. So I was just. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right. Got you. Uh, like when I started reading. Mm. Carol was already the Captain Marvel. Yeah. So I didn't know about the rest of them. Yeah. I knew about the first one, Marvel, from the TV show, the Avengers TV show. All oh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. But Makes sense. Yeah. I've only I've only ever known Carol to be Captain Marvel, mm. not Miss Marvel. Yeah. Anyway, although <laughs> in uh, Ultimate Alliance, yeah, she was Miss Marvel. So, oh. uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like between Miss Marvel and. Captain Marvel, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, she gained her powers in precisely the same way as the first movie. So right. there's no differentiation. The, the Tesseract and the whole. Yes. Yeah, Which okay. I don't really understand. Yeah. How does she get like infinite power from the Tesseract? I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> it, it like bathed her in like power and then it never left her. Although they say like she harvests power from light right in the movie it's like you know they uh monica is describing all their powers and they're like yeah carol can um <coughs> harvest power from like different light sources and then she uses that oh so it's not really infinite i guess okay i thought that was still because she's the strongest avenger yeah well between her and Thor mm. because Thor got an upgrade in Ragnarok yeah and Hulk got a downgrade because he became uh, sentient yeah so <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> he got downgraded just because he became sentient yeah but like he uh, he's Professor Hulk now yeah the more he has a personality mm. the more the less strong he is yeah the more like feral he becomes, the yeah. stronger he becomes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, makes sense. He's not as strong as Thor anymore. Yeah. So it's between Captain Marvel and Thor. Mm. Well, I guess you know, like Wanda, mm, she does magic. So yeah, true. And she she also has the power of a stone. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I don't know. Were you alive in twenty nineteen? What? Yes. Okay. But do you remember what happened? Uh, specific... Like, I know How to Train Your Dragon 3 came out. What movie are we talking about? Captain Marvel. All right. So it's something to do with Captain Marvel, I assume. Yeah. No, I have no idea. What All happened right. in 2019? <laughs> Her first movie came out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> right. And on the press tour uh, for that movie. Yes. 
Brie Larson in one. I'm sure we mentioned this before, right? Mm. Uh, or maybe I've just spoken to you in like real life. I know we did speak about Captain Marvel. I think during the Ant Man episode. Look. Yes. She says, "Wow, there's really a lot of white bed here." Yeah, we spoke about it on the Ant Man episode at the press conference, mm. which rubs the people the wrong way. Yeah. Now. Let me be honest. Right. I find Brie Larson to be a little bit cringe. Okay. Right. I see. Uh, but being a little bit cringe is yes. no reason for somebody to be hated. Yeah. She becomes like a target of right wing attacks for <laughs> the past four years now, right? Okay. Yeah. If she makes like if she pulls a funny face mm. there'll be a video about it the next day <laughs> it's like she can't do anything without and these videos get millions of views right oh. i'm not talking about tens of thousands i'm talking millions Damn. right there's a whole cottage industry based around hating Bray Larson that is insane <laughs> <laughs> and so captain marvel made 1 billion dollars right. not on the dot you know i'm just saying yeah <laughs> in and around a billion yeah over a billion but you know a bill and a bit yeah yeah and that movie came in between avengers infinity war and in uh end game. game yeah yeah there were two movies ant-man and captain marvel mm, yeah right right and captain marvel makes a billion mm. and a lot of these right wing guys put that up uh and they say the only reason it made that much money is because it was sandwiched in between the two avengers movies mm. and people thought you know it would it would lead to yeah, it would tie a lot more into end the uh, the uh, end game yeah. than it really did all right, that yeah. movie did was introduce her yeah right it was set like in the 90s yeah <laughs> <laughs> right it barely had anything to do with any so they say people were tricked into going to watch that first movie mm. and let me be honest that first movie kind of sucked right it's kind of just boring nothingness yeah but these guys they go on about it like it's the worst thing that's ever happened they, <laughs> it's uh the the scale of the hatred towards her uh, is just like a little bit outrageous yeah it's just misogyny and once again i find her a bit cringe yeah so i'm not like trying to defend her like oh she's this perfect you know beacon of <laughs> like, yeah. you know she's just a person yeah and these guys they unnecessarily hate her now the point i'm trying to make is yes. the projections for this weekend is this movie is going to make a very very low total okay it's projected to do worse than the flash oh which <laughs> oh no <laughs> right yeah um some people have put forward the idea that it's too much homework. Mm. Because this is a sequel to obviously Captain Marvel. Yeah. But it's also a sequel to One Division. Yes. And the TV series Miss Marvel. Yes. And the TV series Secret Invasion. Yeah. And something else. <sighs> Thor Love and Thunder. Is it? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, just those. Yeah. But, <laughs> yes. So it used to be like with a Marvel movie, you know, you just watch one every couple of years. Yeah. I mean, like like two or three every couple of years. Yeah. I mean, two or three per year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two or three per year, and you'll be caught up. Yeah. But these TV shows are throwing spanner in the works. Yes, and not everybody has Disney Plus. Yeah, that so, is true. So everybody has access to the movies. Yes. Anyone can go there, but not everyone has Disney Plus. So, yeah. the a lot of people feel that they have no context going into this movie. Yeah, you have not seen any of those things I mentioned. I saw the first Marvel, Captain Marvel. And right, but you haven't seen the rest. I saw Thor, Love and Thunder. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've only seen the movie homework portion of the. Um, right, you're the person I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and did this movie make sense? Vaguely. Right. Not not entirely, but there were some things where I was like, "Oh yeah, that was probably covered in a show." Like the whole Skrull and Kree 
war thing. I'm assuming no. that was. Uh, no. Okay. That's just their life. Okay. That's uh, <laughs> that's from the first Captain Marvel. Oh. Maybe I haven't seen the first Captain Marvel. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this anyway. is not the time for that revelation. <laughs> We're going to be watching it later for the uh, the Patreon. Yes. Yeah, so. Yes. Yeah. So it's. I can move on. Yeah. Um. So I thought it did a good job of introducing the characters. Okay. Both Monica Rambeau and uh, Kamala Khan. Mm, yes. Right. If you hadn't watched the TV shows, yes, I felt they had a, enough of a good introduction that you realize who they are, mm. and you you're saying they they didn't. Well, no, I'm not saying that they like. I think the Marvels were done very well. I just wasn't sure the three the Kree and Skrull stuff. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. Again, that's their like one defining thing. <laughs> the <laughs> Kree and the Skrull are c- constantly at war. They're two warring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. Okay. That's the whole deal. Mm. Um, anyway, the early space shots. Yes. I felt were very ugly. Well, not ugly. They just looked fake. Yeah. It was clearly filmed at the volume. Yeah. And I've heard that they were. This has been a play, a troubled movie. Okay. It was rewritten a few times. Mm. It uh, had to do a lot of reshoots. Mm. Ray Lawson was apparently unhappy. Yeah. Uh, just a bunch of things. A lot. <laughs> a lot of negative things, right? Yeah. right? And spoiler alert: I like this movie, <laughs> but there's a lot of negative things to say about it. Yeah. And if you recall, last week when we were speaking about the Marvel article. Yes. They were trying to sort of pull, pin the blame on Nia DaCosta, the director of this movie. Yes. And I don't believe Nia DaCosta is to blame at all. No. I think she's crafted a good movie here. Mm. Because as we are led to believe, yeah. the directors of a Marvel movie are left to do the character work. Yeah. And the action sequences are handled by, you know, team. Yeah. <laughs> right. The action so, people. So the... Character work. Well, a lot of some of the character work happens in action sequences. Yeah. But anyway, kind basically, of. I'm going to take a page out of our right wing friend's book, mm-hmm. and anything that's good, that's near the Costa. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> anything that's bad is due to wokeness <laughs> <laughs> and cancel culture. Right. Okay. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> So, yeah, that's how the blame breaks down. Okay. First thing is I really love Kamala Khan's intro. Yeah. Which, you know, it... it, For the... For people like you, (laughs) it's a lot like Spider-Verse. Yes. Right? But that's the... The style that was in her show. Yeah. In all six episodes of her show, they were like... uh, Flipping in between... Like... Drawn books kind of thing like drawn images mm-hmm. yeah. and you know like reality right that yeah. was a huge part of her show so I'm glad yeah. they incorporated it I wish they would incorporate it a little bit more yeah like if they were planning to do something yeah and, she, and like you see her like drawing and it shows like a a little thing mon- of like a montage of those drawings doing something yeah <laughs> you know that would have been cool that would be yeah. they only brought it one brought it up once and then you have a did paid, it like did it again yeah uh, I thought that could have been used a lot more yeah definitely the next thing is the villain mm-hmm. who is a kind of nobody yeah who is she okay besides the leader of the Kree, Kree who is she other than that I don't know oh okay cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what you want me to say like from the comics yeah, I I've guess. never seen her in the comics. Oh, just nothing. There's I'm sure she exists. I'm yeah, just saying probably. I've never read a comic with her in it. Okay. Yeah. Right. But right. I think they really wanted Ronan the Accuser, mm. and this character is a lot like Ronan the Accuser. Okay. But she doesn't have any interiority. In- interiority. Yes. 
What does do that we mean? know anything about her? No. It's <laughs> her motivations are you destroyed our world. Yes. We need to get it back. Get it back and potentially kill you. Yeah. That, that could have been done by any Cree. Yeah. There's nothing that makes her unique. Like uh, we don't know anything about her personality. Mm. If we saw maybe a flashback of her being like the strongest Cree, like they had like a you know like a they were in a gladiator stadium yeah and, and she, then they fought and she's the last one left alive yeah she's you know that would be something it'd be like all right she's the strongest she's the but we literally know nothing about her it's, <laughs> <laughs> we come into this movie with her just being the the top dog yeah and she's the person who finds the the stone yeah no, um that was just an example of you know something they could have done mm. or she could have just been like you ruined my world but also because of that you killed my child or like you know yeah. something that's personal to her yeah it's just yeah that makes sense it's just a generic Cree yeah. <laughs> thing to want you know yeah she has again no interiority yeah I just like that word so I'm gonna <laughs> gonna try bring it up as much as possible <laughs> interiority yeah um, um yes and she has what it's <laughs> Did you watch Guardians of the Galaxy? Which one? The first one. Yeah. So you know Ronan the Accuser. Yeah. This character is very similar to Ronan the Accuser. Yeah. So I just assumed somebody wanted Ronan the Accuser here. <laughs> and they were like, oh shit, he's dead. Yeah. What can we do? <laughs> uh, but yes, um, she's just the female version of Ronan. Yeah. And yes, I think that's the weakest part of this movie mm. the villain yeah your thoughts I yeah I, I feel like they even if they didn't show like um okay no never mind because you actually just you kind of said it anyway where like even if they were like if they showed a gladiator arena and she came out the strongest you know fair enough she deserves to rule but I was thinking like even like you know Darth Vader with the force choke showing that he's super powerful yeah and people should fear him yeah just stuff, stuff like that we yeah. have no sense of her or yeah I'm, anything we've got the what's it called the space stick that she has yeah the universal weapon or something like yeah that. but what, what, what is it called I don't know exactly but I swear it was universal weapon it, but it's something it's, like that it's yeah. the same thing that Ronan had right mm. and he put the purple stone in it the up, I'm gonna call it the strong stone but it's, the, it's the power stone yeah. <laughs> and she has like this purple glow coming yeah and I was just like that eh, seems quite similar yeah it's too similar it's like do you have a purple thing it was as well <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> is that just how it flashes you know yeah I assumed his was purple because of the the stone the yeah. stone yes so that would make sense yeah I didn't like that at all mm. uh, can we move on yeah of course you know when I say show don't tell yes they both showed and told <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about the powers right yeah. so that first sequence with the power switching yeah we get to very early on we get to see a demonstration of their powers yeah. which is a you know good move <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because we obviously want to see oh I mean it sets us up for the rest of the movie yeah I love the kind of like montage thing. yes but then off oh yeah sorry sorry carry on <laughs> where they're like they are they're fighting and they're kind of like disorientated every time they switch because they're still not sure what's going on so it's kind of just like switch fight mm-hmm. hope that you can get something and then switch again very quickly mm. and I liked how they cut between all the different places mm. it was very well done in my opinion alright yeah I thought it sucked okay not the execution mm. the idea okay it got very boring after a while if yeah. they had done it for like maybe the opening sequence mm. that and then they just went back to their original bodies yeah. that'd be fine okay but this constantly switching and like, <laughs> and like um switching at 
very convenient times and sometimes yeah <laughs> you know it's it's i could have done without that okay i again it just got irritating after a while yeah got that's sick of it that's fair um but again i like that intro and it shows us their powers but then after it monica explains it because yes. <laughs> <laughs> just in the, case you didn't yeah, get it well the thing is it's very even if you see it it's hard to explain what you're seeing yeah <laughs> right? <laughs> right because even monica at this point i'm still unclear what her powers are <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> because at some point you know, that exact point that we're talking about now when she's explaining the powers mm. and like <laughs> she says your thing is light my thing is light your thing is light that's how we all together that yeah. was very like <laughs> <laughs> you need it spelled out for you in front of you <laughs> but when she was saying that she said um she was listing the powers and yes. when it gets to her she says i can see light then i was like uh so can i yeah, so can i <laughs> that's called having eyes <laughs> you, what are you talking about you can see light <laughs> but yeah um yeah, yeah her powers were just all over the place mm. and if we're talking about it as a triumvirate mm. i thought monica was shafted yeah. right she had so little to do Mm. and in the very early sequences you, you know we're talking about switching yeah it those switching scenes mainly focus on carol and kamala yeah it barely focuses on like later on she gets in some shots yeah in the finale yeah but the opening or like the first two thirds of the movie mm. she barely in the action sequences barely gets anything yeah pretty so, much so that's just in terms of doing things but in terms of character Yeah. She kind of had a bullshit <laughs> character arc, you know. Yeah. It's like she's upset with Carol for leaving. Yeah. And we'll get to that scene, but it's like she confesses that she murdered a planet. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like I was embarrassed and then she explains how she murdered the planet yeah. and Monica's like that's not how family works and goes and hugs her <laughs> it's like you, you massacred her you that was an extinction event that like you, you destroyed their son <laughs> it's, 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 they should be upset but yeah she's just like that's not how family works and hugs her yeah and yeah that character arc yeah is nonsense yes yeah. she didn't mm. make it up in any way or like you know yeah. say I'm sorry I wasn't there for you um yeah but all this time I was like I don't know thinking about you or something like something that means something to Monica not like <laughs> I destroyed this world <laughs> that's why I was embarrassed to come back she kind of vaguely suggests that she was thinking about it because it was like um she went away from earth and then she'd be back before she knew it and then uh she like she said she wanted to fix i guess making yeah it didn't look like she ever tried to help them yeah no <laughs> <laughs> she's like i'm trying to fix it and then like <laughs> at the end of the movie it's they're like oh it's pretty easy you just go and like this and it's fine and it's, <laughs> she never tried at all bro she's a fucking liar <sighs> Anyway, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to click bait title this Brie Larson. <laughs> I'll take a million views, thanks. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> um okay, we're talking about the characters and yeah. what they got to do. Yeah. Um Carol, yeah. She got a lot to do in terms of action. Yeah. And her character, mm. but she's still like very stoic. Yeah, in certain places. Mm. But her character is so ill defined. Okay. Her character from the first one to this one is mm. way different. Well, the thing is they've never had like a characterization for her, right? Isn't her like from what I remember of the first movie, it's like she's a a hothead and she's like very um temperamental, I guess. And then over time she kind of learns to control herself a bit better. And so in this one it's like I think they've played it down too much now. Mm. She's like too stoic. Mm. 
Well, well, what I was going to say is... Sorry, yeah. At the end of Infinity War, mm. she's in the post-credits. Yes. Is she in the post-credits? I'm pretty sure she is. No. Uh, it's like the, the self... Oh, yeah, it's not she's her. In the po- she's in the post-credits of her movie. Fury pages her yes, at the yes. end of Infinity War. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. She appears in the post-credits of her movie. Mm. And... Look, in the first movie, her mind is erased. Or, like, she can't remember. Yeah, right. So. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, we don't know her character. Yeah. Because her mind was erased. She's trying to find out who she was. Right. Right, that's what I'm saying. We don't really get to know her. Yeah. Then in the Avengers, she's just fighting. Yeah. We don't really get to know her. Mm. So, this movie doesn't have, like, something to latch on to. Mm. You know, like, and it's been many years. Yeah. She left in '95. It's what year is it? I don't know. <laughs> it's been nearly thirty years. So oh, it's twenty twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. know, her character may have changed drastically. Yeah. But there's nothing really. You you don't get a sense of who she is. Mm. Like, like Kamala. Well, we'll we'll speak about it. But she's like this person with enthusiasm and like <laughs> like, like oh. you get a sense of who she is that's what I'm trying to say it's as very a, cute as she opposed to Carol else. yeah right alright there's this okay can we mm. get on to Kamala yeah she's my favorite character in yeah. this movie she's so uh, okay yeah she's your favorite character fair enough yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, um, unfortunately nobody I don't want to say nobody but mm. A lot of people didn't watch the Miss Marvel TV show. Yeah. Hi. That's yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, people like you. <laughs> yeah. But not people like you. Yeah. But people didn't watch it because Disney fucked it up. Oh, okay. Disney usually spreads their TV shows out. You know, we've been speaking about this. Yeah, right. Secret Invasion ended. They had Ahsoka. Yeah. Ahsoka ended Loki, right? Yeah. So their brands don't overlap. Yeah. And like take airtime away from each other. Yeah. Right? You can watch them separately instead of having to watch them at the same times. Yeah. Like if Ahsoka is out, that's all people are talking about. If Loki is out, that's all people are talking Mm. about. They don't want to split conversation about their parts. Right, I see. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. But for whatever fucking reason, and this is the only time it's ever happened, mm. they had uh, Miss Marvel, mm. and they also had the Obi Wan TV show. Oh, and they ran at the exact same time. Oh, right. And okay. I'm like, what the fuck? Why would you do this? And Miss Marvel had, I don't know if he had the lowest ratings, mm. but again, I, I don't want to blame it all on that. Yeah, because there's people who just made genuinely not be interested in much Marvel yeah so I, I don't want to be like oh it's all Obi-Wan could always fall <laughs> <laughs> you know like uh, again people just not may be interested yeah but I really loved her from that TV show she okay. was the best thing about that TV show which kind of makes sense because it's her show p- people steal the show in other mm. people shows all the time <laughs> in other people shows yeah that's fair like I'm trying to think who's a big character that's not the main not the main character Stannis Baratheon who? Stannis Baratheon who is that? the one and true king of Westeros oh this is Game of Thrones yes (laughs) (laughs) he's my favourite character in Game of Thrones he's the he's the true king right but uh, those TV show bastards they ruin (laughs) I want to fight them (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyway, we're getting off track here. Love bit. We're supposed to, you know, be Get focused. Yeah. Right? I, uh, again, mm. I loved her. I loved both her, the character, and I loved her, the actress. Yeah. She has a, such a fun, energetic uh, personality. It kind of raises yeah. your mood up. Yeah. You know, like, uh, have you, do you know people like that who it's like, you just sit around them for like five minutes and they kind of, raise your whole mood yeah right it's uh it's infectious yeah right yeah so i liked her a lot she in terms of having things to do she had a lot of things to do Mm. and her character had a lot of things to do yeah but i think there's a 
arc that's missing. An arc. We <sighs> get one okay. scene of it. Okay. That's when they were evacuating the Skrull planet. Oh, and she and she yeah. shouts, uh, "We save who we can." Yeah. And I thought that was gonna be like, "Oh, I thought you were a hero, and you like." You say you try to s- at least tried to save everybody. Yeah. And that would be like a point of contention. Mm. But it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. No. In the next scene. Carol apologizes for shouting at her, not like... <laughs> not for leaving she, yeah, people behind. Yeah, she doesn't uh, yeah. address the concern. Yeah. And I thought that would have been a great... Um, Something to The thing is, onto. are you familiar with stan culture? Yes. So there's these people online who are obsessed with a thing. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> with a thing, yeah. So, Korean pop groups. K-pop. Um, just regular pop stars yeah. from America... Um, the whole stand thing is from Eminem. Eminem. Yeah, he gave the name, but it's. Yeah. Well, I guess he has a lot of sickos yeah. as well. But like, it's these fans who don't have like a life. Yeah, they live vicariously through these celebrities. They, yes. Um, I remember a thing I saw this week. Right. Mm. Uh, it's an Anna Darmus fan page. Oh no. <laughs> that said, um, Anna Darmus or like. Oscar nominated actress Anna oh. Darmus has now unfollowed attempted actress Gal Gadot on Instagram. <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> Wait a second. Right, which is a, a huge slam on Gal Gadot. But uh, yeah. the. You know, it's like, why on earth are you checking who she's following and unfollowing? You know, it's like. Mm, it's a little bit weird, <laughs> this, yeah. You. Don't you have a life? Don't you. Don't you. Why don't you go to the park <laughs> and, like, <laughs> walk around? Sit down. Yeah. Under a tree. Yeah. There's like... Do go, something. Go watch a movie, you know? Like, <laughs> that. it's crazy to me that people are, Do that. are so... And it's mainly American. Their celebrity worship is so over the top. Yeah. Now, that is Kamala. Yeah. She celebrity worships... Marvel. Captain Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> right. She... In her room, she has all these posters of her. Yeah. Um. And, you know, later on in the movie, she says something like... I don't give you a lot of space to be a real person. Yeah. So those two things of I don't give you space to be a real person and thing I thought she was gonna be like, you know, they say don't meet your heroes. Yeah. That the arc was gonna be like, oh, she realizes Carol, you know, even though she has great powers, she can't do everything. Yeah. And she realized that she's human too, and she has human faults. Yeah. But they never followed that up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's they have that one scene. Of mm. her shouting. Yeah. And they have that scene of... Oh, they also have the scene of Carol being the Annihilator. Yeah. <laughs> right? That could be another thing to be her... Her be like, oh... But it's not really human nature to go destroy a son. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest yeah. with you, yeah. Uh, I can't name too many humans who have done that. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're out there. I'm not going to... I'm not going to rule out the possibility. But, you know... I think it's unlikely. Yeah. yeah. Anyway... So I thought that was a missed opportunity. Okay. Mm. Your yeah. thought. Well, anything you want to say? It's... I kind of... I feel like she did kind of have an arc in a way. Just not really... Who are you talking about? Um, Kamala. I said she did have an arc. Yeah. I was saying it was just a missed opportunity. They didn't choose that one. Oh, a different... Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, never mind then. All right. Okay. Cool. Um... I also really liked how they, well, some things. I liked how they uh, did certain things with the camera work as well. It wasn't like, you know, over the top, like Oscar worthy stuff, but there were some very nice cinematic things that they did. Like, um, you know, Carol, right at the beginning, she leaves the spaceship to go check out the thing. And the camera, like, pans over the top of the spaceship Mm. to reveal the space. I thought that was very cool. Like, I liked some of their camera work. All right. Yeah. Uh, You know, I said this is a sequel to Secret Invasion. Yes. Is it Question Bach? I don't know. Okay. (laughs) This is a problem. (laughs) You haven't seen it. Yeah, I do. (laughs) Okay. Nick Fury in that show was, like, tense, on edge. Uh, you can't trust anybody. 
Right. Uh, everyone thinks he's finished. Mm. But when you think he's finished, that's when he's not finished. He's... <laughs> 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 So when he's the opposite of finished. He started it. <laughs> and in this movie he's like a comedic yeah. like the comedy relief. I know? love the quotes. He like he shouts back all <laughs> magic. He shouts like <laughs> the, it's you know he's like a different character a total one. It's so bizarre. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh this is ostensibly a sequel. Yeah. But there's no in, in information that indicates that mm. this could have taken place before secret invasion yeah but either way <laughs> it's still you know not good yeah it's not good that he has a way different personality in between projects and especially because that one came out a few weeks ago so that's kind of fresh in our minds yeah unless you've forgotten it like <laughs> <laughs> no 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 <laughs> right um there could be like a a scroll No, definitely no scroll explanation for that. No. Okay. Why would he just be a scroll here? Why does he look like Dick Fury? They everybody on that spaceship knows the deal. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's just the only the, thing I could he think. He had of. a Nick Fury on Earth. Yeah. Because he was on space in space and he didn't want people to worry on Earth that he was missing. Right. But if he's in space You know where is he going to go? <laughs> you wouldn't need to trick the people in space. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's that's all I've got yeah. for that. I don't know. Then we get a Valkyrie cameo. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this but uh, she's a homosexual. Oh. That's cool. Yeah. No. Nice. But she's looking for the queen of Asgard. Yes. She want well <laughs> there's no current person as a queen I'm saying she's looking to date. Yes. <laughs> because she's the king of Asgard. Yes. Right. <laughs> 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 right and um I don't even think it's hinted but I think people have projected onto the movie mm. that Carol is also homosexual. Oh. And this oh. uh you know it's like getting Superman as your king. Oh. <laughs> you know getting right. Carol as your queen. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <it's, laughs> right. Um but yeah I I think that's why she had the cameo mm. or just to like remind people hey <laughs> this hey, is still exist yeah that kind of thing <laughs> but yeah a lot of people because this is the thing she has a very close relationship with uh, Maria Rambo yeah so people assume that that was a uh, homosexual relationship hmm but uh, i think that mo- that relationship also works as just being good friends yeah but yeah. either way right it's unconfirmed whether she's homosexual or not and yeah. disney are too much of cowards to openly state. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> right. We'll never say it. Um Yeah, I didn't like the explanation of how Monica got her powers. Okay. She yeah. says like I walked through a a reactor or something. No, I walked through a shield a made shield. by a a hex from a witch. Oh. Do you not remember that? No, I vaguely remember it. I just thought it had something to do with nuclear energy. No. Yeah. Did you hear hex from a witch? Yeah. And what did you think? Nuclear energy. Yeah. I don't know why. Hex from a witch. Yeah. That's Wanda from WandaVision. Oh. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> The thing is what in that show, mm. sorry to spoil, but Wanda using her chaos magic has mm. created a dome <gasps> and mm. yeah, okay. around the town. Yeah. And all the people in the town are under her control. She's like puppeteering them. It's like under the dome but with puppets. That's not the plot of under the dome at all except that there's a dome in both. <laughs> yeah. <It's>, uh, <laughs> you just wanted to say I need the dome. <laughs> Look, she's puppeteering them to do, you know, her bidding. Right. Or like to live out her fantasy. Mm. She's making these people act how she wants them to act, you okay. know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. And sword mm-hmm. which is a i don't know the acronym <laughs> but they are more offensive shield okay right a more offensive shield the organization shield yes they like were doing covert black ops stuff. oh okay yeah these people at sword are creating technology and like uh, ahead of stuff oh okay. right and yeah. then saber is the thing in space right right 
she was working on Saber. Oh. So she okay. was working on Saber. Okay. She got dusted. Right. <laughs> Which uh why are you laughing? <laughs> she got dusted. What's uh she got they say they call it blipped. Yeah. But for so many years I called it dusted. <laughs> yeah. It's basically just <laughs> they, dusted. They they only called it blip when Oh, yeah, they call it blip in Endgame. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh I just called it dusted since the end of Infinity War. Right. But, makes sense. Uh, yeah, the what was I saying? Uh she was working for Saber and she got busted. Yes, and she said uh they didn't allow us to go back into space if we got dusted. Yeah. Right? right. So then she went to work for Sword. Okay. And it saw that sent her into the hex. Okay. Right? Right. And at the end of that show, she they were like testing her DNA. Okay. And they say like you're not human anymore. Yeah. <gasps> Something else. Wow. and a lot of people assume that's the that's code for mutant okay right oh okay then in the miss marvel show mm. she gets okay this is the thing what the overall point i was trying to make yeah in miss marvel there's a whole long story but in the movie she says my granny gave it to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> um photon saying oh i went through a Hex, hex, hex in a thing it's yeah. it's too like specific if mm. she said something like it's a long story i'll tell you some other time or like you know like yeah. um it, if she said was like oh it was just some weird shit yeah or like <laughs> <laughs> you know like something that would be acceptable yeah but it just felt too it felt awkward mm. you know okay yeah anyway at the end of miss marvel the tv show this similar thing happens okay um the only reason she can use that bangle yeah is because her grandmother was like from a different dimension okay. oh called a nua right okay so like any random person couldn't just use the bangle yeah but so that's why it's a bit confusing this movie when that lady can use the other bangle just fine yeah <laughs> <Right? laughs> but so at the end of the show her friend does some test on her Right. And he figures out that there's something different about her DNA. Okay. And when he says he's like you're something different. Hmm. And then in Miss Marvel, yeah, the X-Men sting plays. Oh. No 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 no. Right. Oh, that's cool. So both these characters have been set up as X-Men mutants. Titans. Oh, okay. well, no, not yeah, mutants, sorry. Yeah. Right. Right. right? And we saw the Did you see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? Yes. And they go to the council. Mm. Uh high Ill- council. Illuminati. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. There we see Maria Rambo as Captain Marvel. Yes. And we see Who the fuck do we see? We see Professor X. Professor X, yeah. right? Right. That's our next hint. Hint at a mutant. Yeah. Oh, also in One Division we're told that the stone didn't give wonder powers the stone activated powers wonder already had right yeah right so she also a mutant mm. um i'm trying to think what else but they've been like blue balling us for mutants <laughs> for years right <laughs> because look you never lived in a pre 2008 world well i did i just wasn't very old <laughs> whatever yeah The Marvel characters that are popular mm. were be tier characters. Yes. I've mentioned this many times, yeah, right? Right. Go listen to our uh, Ant-Man episode. Yeah. The Avengers were a bunch of losers. Nobody yeah. <laughs> <laughs> barely anybody paid attention to the Avengers. Yeah. The A-list of comic characters, mm. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, X-Men. Yes. And you know like some other DC stuff but like you you, you get main, what i'm saying yeah those were the top the cream of the the cream, cream de la cream right and like i said marvel were going out of business in the 90s yeah so they sold off their most their biggest properties yeah so they sold off the fantastic four x-men <gasps> spider-man yeah but they couldn't sell the avengers because nobody wanted them, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> that's the reason they had <laughs> they could make these movies because nobody had nobody else had the rights yeah So that's why do you get what I'm saying about 
Mm. X-Men are way more popular. Fantastic Four are way more popular. We've all been waiting until mm. for their introduction to the MCU. Do you think that the Marvels will be part of Deadpool 3? Because, like, Deadpool already works quite closely with the X-Men. So, would would they be part of that? I have no idea. Okay, fair enough. All right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, they were explaining the villains, mm. what they were doing. Yeah. And somebody says it's like fracking. Yeah. Do you know what fracking is? Yeah. What is it? It's where there's gas like trapped under the earth, under the surface. And uh, you basically blow up a bunch of stuff above it so that you can get the gas out. Is that it? Pretty much. Okay. Well, Mm. I saw your thoughts in Venezuela. Okay. What do you know about Venezuela? Uh, It's a South American country. What else? It's one of like four countries in the world that begins with V. Anything else? Uh, They have natural gas deposits sure okay oil oil okay oil is it oil i don't know because fracking is like natural gas fracking's for oil fracking what fracking's for oil okay you frack to get oil okay i'll research this and come back with an answer later we can pause the podcast and google right now okay all right (laughs) (laughs) listeners hang on (laughs) All right, listeners. <laughs> it, it's me who's correct. It's both of us that's correct. But I'm more correct. Oh, you? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Sure. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> so, Venezuela, the right wing has been talking about it for the last 10 years that socialism ruined Venezuela. Yeah. So, you knew that? No. So, why did you say yeah? Because I vaguely know of it. So, when I asked you what, <laughs> what do you know about <laughs> Venezuela, why didn't you mention that? Because it didn't pop into my mind. All right. Very convenient. Yeah. All right. But anyway. (laughs) Anyway, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say socialism didn't ruin Venezuela. Okay. But their entire economy hinged on on petrol. Okay. Gas. On oil. Oil. Gas. Right? Yeah. So, it doesn't matter what system you have, what Mm. system of governance you have. Yeah. Having your entire economy rely on one sector... It's mm. not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that, gang. Although, mm. the Middle East is doing it quite well at the moment. Well, they're moving into, like, sports and, like... That is true. Uh, yeah. Tourism and, like, trying to find yeah. other views. Mm. Mohammed bin Salman, went since he took, took over the kingship... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's called. The he, throne. He's the de facto king. His dad's not dead, but mm. he runs the operations. Right. Since he took over, he's been in charge of... You know, modernizing hmm. Saudi Arabia. Cool. But he's also the crown prince of crime. <laughs> he's one of the most evil people in life. But <laughs> yeah, he modernized the, the infrastructure and, like, uh, you know, he did some good things for tourism. So nice. who's to say if he's bad or not? <laughs> you know, there's crime, a lot, tourism. There's a lot of facts on either side. <laughs> you know, we, we, who's to say what's right? Anyway. Yes, anyway. So, Venezuela, uh, the U.S. Yes. were big buyers of their oil. Makes sense. But they put sanctions on Venezuela, right? Oh, okay. But stopped them from selling oil, first of all. Yeah. And also, they started fracking, oh. which damaged the environment badly. Yes. But got a lot of oil for America. Right. Which they didn't need to buy mm. because it was... From America. Yeah. (laughs) But again, the trade-off is that environments were fucked up. Yes. Because they drilled far into the ground. Yeah. (laughs) And yeah, the... So yeah, that's what kind of sunk Venezuela. Okay. All right. And yeah, that's what fracking is about. Okay. Sinking Venezuela. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, sinking Venezuela and destroying the environment of several American towns. Yes. Uh, Yeah. To me, that sounds pretty good, you know. You sacrifice a few towns and uh, Venezuela and 
You get some oil. That's uh, it's <laughs> and all of Venezuela. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> same thing here. It's like you sacrifice all nine planets around the sun, and you take our sun. Hmm. Yeah. Pluto that's is a, a good planet. idea. You yeah. Know, on the list of ideas, that's near the top. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the next thing is how uh, Kamala's brother says the crazy glass elevator. Yeah. What did that make you think of? Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. Hmm. Yes, I thought you wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to catch you out. Uh, for okay, for once you have you know I understand a reference. I read you those know, books. Yeah. It's one and fifty four against now. <laughs> <So> <laughs> you're catching up. You're nearly you're nearly there, right? I'm on my way. But yes, comeback uh, of the century. I didn't really think it had much to do with this movie. No, not really. Usually, when you like mention something, it thematically like links. Yeah. But that. That book is like they go to the moon yeah. and they come across these like things called Venetia's nids. Yeah. K and I D S. Yeah. <laughs> and they like, you know, weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Pretty um, much sums it up. Yeah. There was a really cool scene mm. where I think they were practicing swapping. Oh yeah, right? in the spaceship. And the Beastie Boys Intergalactic is playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really cool sequence, right? Um, oh, the soundtrack th- is incredible, by the way. Hmm. That's the only song I really. Know. It was, you know, when the the cats were hatching. Yeah. It was Moonlight from Cats. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Like, <laughs> uh, somebody. One of my friends mm. said that that's a thing from Cats. Yeah, <laughs> I've never seen Cats, so I don't know. But uh, all right, good. Yeah, <laughs> although very on the nose. Yeah, a little bit. Mm. But I like the idea that. Well, they're, they're not cats; they're flurkins. Yeah. So, but they're basically cats. They just they look like cats. And listen, that plot didn't work for me. Oh. Uh, the thing is, okay. it's well set up. Yes. And it's well paid off. Yes. The problem for me is the set decoration. Set decoration. Yes. Okay. If I saw one of those motherfuckers, I'm throwing them off the. <laughs> I'm I'm shooting them into the sun. I don't know <laughs> why did these people. Why did these people open a room, see so many of these fucking things, and not panic and not think like we are being taken over. <laughs> That's like the alien from the movie Alien. That's uh, that's some sick shit, right? I would kick that thing into the sun. I would drop kick it into the sun. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. And then when it started opening up, I'm like, oh my god. Oh no, something terrible. This happening. is the real villain of the movie about to come out. This uh, <laughs> and yeah, and then it's uh, just a flicking. But the thing is, I really like that scene. Mm. Off uh, and or a flitting. It's an it's a very unique thing yeah I don't think I've seen something like this no. <laughs> I think I'd remember if I'd seen something <laughs> like this <laughs> but yeah um, I love the creativity the or- originality of that yeah another th- thing that I enjoy the creativity and originality of was the um, their people their languages song oh uh, yeah that's great yeah. <laughs> it reminded me of like this would be a plot of like a one hour teen drama <laughs> like, <laughs> it would be one episode and it would be fun and yeah you know musical yes yeah so I liked it mm. and just like what's the other thing I said the switching powers mm. it got irritating <laughs> I wish they you know like they sang a bit and then like it ended yeah but like yeah it just kept going on yeah. and uh Another plot yeah. I didn't think paid off was her husband. Oh, the prince. Yeah, because she was like being weird about it. It's a marriage of convenience. That's the thing. When she gets there, she seems fine. But yeah. when she's talking about it, she's like, oh my God, oh, you know, mm. like she's being weird. Yeah. So it doesn't really make sense. Why was she being weird? Maybe she's just acting on the planet. I don't know why she would be, but. She seems like fine like confident you know when yeah hmm I don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway um but yes I really like that it was kind of weird 
but there's a dress change you know when they start oh, dancing where she like she changes into a like a flowy uh, yeah a Captain yeah. Marvel dress yeah <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that mm. that dress and that dancing sequence yeah but they didn't explain that at all no. <laughs> like in the next scene he gives them clothes yeah but before like it just appears on her yeah and yeah it's like I feel like it's similar to like the you know the Iron Man suit that's like nano bots or nanoparticles or whatever it is yeah. where he's got it in like a chain and it just whoo, mm. does the thing so, uh, I feel like there's a similar thing for her, her Captain Marvel suit I guess where it can just change into whatever she wants it to. But it's just a regular Kree uniform. Yeah. Because, okay, well... (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if you know this, but in the first movie, she was a Kree. Yes. And she's just wearing a regular Kree uniform. It doesn't have any special powers or anything. Yeah. So, I don't think so. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. So, Fury and the civilians, when they crash land Mm. in New York... Yes. I'm... 80% 80% sure that's where the last scene of Succession was filmed. Oh. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> that precise exact location doing that exact shot. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. And then... It uh, was planned. I listened to the Succession theme song for like five hours. <laughs> <laughs> After that, because yeah, I love it so much. I was listening to it on the way here. I was listening to it on the way here as well. So... No. Yeah. To your own house. All right, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, was Monica's sacrifice necessary? I feel like it sets up something. Yeah, but it's so dumb. The way yeah, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like, you can close the hole, but only on the other side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Like, why uh, can she not close it from bro, her side? If it was like she was closing it and the villain pushed her through or something... That would be something. Yeah. Uh, you this can only is. close it from one side. It's just so very poorly done. Yeah. And like I said at the beginning, due to wokeness. <laughs> it's, uh, anything that's bad, it's due to wokeness. Um, can we get go on to the post credit scenes? Oh, do you have anything else to say about the movie? Um, Not really. All right. Yeah. The first... Oh, yeah. What did you write it? Well, say it after the... After... Okay. So the first post credit scene is oh, yeah, right, Kate yeah. Bishop coming home. Yes. And sitting in the dark is yeah. <laughs> Kamala Khan. And she does a Nick Fury. <laughs> I thought that was so funny, bro. And also, again, her personality, she's so charming. Yeah. <laughs> her doing it was so funny. Yeah. And Kate Bishop's reaction, like, uh, okay, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> I'm dealing with a psycho. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Um, and obviously the second post credit scene, which everyone is talking about. Mm. Well, well, sorry, mm. I shouldn't move on. Okay. She mentions Ant Man's daughter. Yes. We mentioned this in an episode long ago. Yes. That they've been making uh, a lot of kid superheroes. Yeah. Right. Right. We have. So, who would be on the team? Uh, Kamala. Yes. Uh, Ant Man's daughter. It seems. Uh, Cassie. Yeah. Uh, Kate Bishop. Yes, the young new Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah. How, uh, how do you know her? I watched the Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah. Is that the only one you watched? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> what drew you to Hawkeye? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, it was a Christmas series. I like Christmas. Yeah. All right. The finale anyway. was great. Anyway, uh, probably, I don't know. Would Tom Holland fall under? But I don't want him. I hate him. Okay, but would he... The way I feel about Miss Marvel mm. is how I should be feeling about Spider-Man. Yes. But I hate Tom Holland, so... I see. Fuck him. I'm glad they erased him from <laughs> people's memories. <laughs> I wish that spell erased it from my memory. But anyway... <laughs> but would he be young I hope not. or old I hope Avengers? not. He'd have to be... He's Avengers. in university. Yeah, but he's still Spider-Man. Fuck him. Okay. Get him out of here. Okay, fair enough. Um, that's the vision. Ah, uh, I guess yeah. He's eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in twenty fifteen. <laughs> but well, uh, the vision is alive. Uh, oh, he's back to life from Wonder Vision. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. I, Wanda's I, hex also okay. brought him back to life. Oh. Okay. Just like it gave her powers. One okay. of her powers. Huh. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Uh fuck. The that oh, oh. Amer- America Chavez. Oh yeah. Uh that makes a lot of sense. Thor's daughter. Yeah. So it's a lady girls team. Yeah. Or a girls team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of any young boys. Uh Falcon kind of oh, takes over the Hulk has a son. Hulk has a son. Yeah, from She Hulk TV show. Oh. Hulk yeah, has a son. Uh, uh, okay. Like it's so bizarre. <laughs> in the first episode, you see him go off into space. Yeah. Uh in the 6th okay. episode he comes back and he has a son. <laughs> <laughs> How long is this thing been going for? <laughs> anyway, um I gave this movie a 7. Okay. I liked it a lot. Uh perhaps it was just very low expectations. Yeah. You know, like you the low tracking numbers mm. i assumed is because of bad word of mouth yeah so because i've heard only bad things about this yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know like we were talking about the article last week yeah. trying to throw near the cost underneath the bus mm. it's it seems as if the marvel is imploding yeah because even in 2013 if you recall in the ant man episode i went through like a timeline of marvel mm. and in 2013 Thor the Dark World and Iron Man 3 came out. Yes. And those were looked at as bad movies. Yeah. Although I like Thor the Dark World a lot. <laughs> right. And Iron Man 3, but I didn't like them at the time. Yeah. Anyway, in that time, yes. even though those were critically negative films, yes. Iron Man 3 made a billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Thor made over 500 million. It's, you know, they were never financially down. Yeah. They may have been like in quality but never money wise. Yeah. This is the first time that like it's money in terms of money they're in a bad place. Yeah. So I'm interested to see because that article last week said that there's a lot of changes coming. Yeah. Right? So I'm mm-hmm. interested to see how they go on from mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, because this this is the highest grossing franchise of all time I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's Definitely. The run they've been on is historical. Nobody's ever done it. Yeah. So, it's always see how can they replicate that success, you know? Who would even come close? Star I, Wars. Yeah. But Star But, Wars only has 11 movies. Yeah. It's um, Marvel has I I think it's 40 now. I think this may have been the 40th movie. But yeah. it's definitely in the 30s. Yeah. So, just by sheer volume Yeah, it's just they've got everyone beat this. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> Can we get on to recommendations? Yep. I watched the Loki finale this week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Right. Um a lot of people calling it the best Marvel show. Mm. And I think I agree with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good uh Well, the Marvel shows aren't great. Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry. What if is my favorite? Yeah. This is second. But I okay. did like the end of this. Spoiler alert. Loki becomes the god of stories. <gasps> okay. You know, he was the god of tricks and lies. Yeah. Right. And so stories are better than lies, you know. Yeah. They're fun. <laughs> 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 All right. And uh, do you recall I said Loki is kind of being set up to be a central character going forward? Yes. Yeah. He... I don't want to spoil what happens at the end, but... I don't think so anymore. Okay. <laughs> It's not like he dies or something, but he's just not in a position to to be a central character. Yeah. So, he's still kind of peripheral. Yeah. This okay. finale kind of intrigued me. Okay. Like where is it going to go from here? Mm. But I don't know when it was, but like last year I'm pretty sure I read something that said season 2 of Loki is not going to be season 2 of Loki. Oh. <laughs> It's going to be season 1 part 2. Like right. it's one whole, whole story. starting with season 1 it's not season 1 season 2 mm. so okay. and it's because most of them are limited series yeah so i think one division is a limited series we're not going to get a sequel to one division yeah. right? right it's uh yeah so i'm curious to see where it goes yeah okay yeah. yours um i watched naked it's a I think it's a Marlon Wayans movie. It's either Marlon or Damon Wayans. And um 
you can't tell the winds apart. No. And they're black. So you can't tell black people apart. Very no. interesting. I can't we tell got him brothers listeners. apart. We got him. <laughs> we got his ass. Clip it up, listeners. <laughs> Share it on your social media. <laughs> he is hashtag cancelled. Oh, no. Cancelled. All right. Yes, Karen. Yeah, I... I can tell them apart. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> they, um... Yeah, they... It's it's a, like a thing about time travel. He's... So he wakes up. He it, The whole premise is that he, like... It's his wedding day. And, um... He wakes up naked in an elevator. Mm. Right? And so he has to live that day over and over and over. Until eventually, I guess he gets everything right mm. and yeah i i quite enjoyed the way it was done i just feel like some things you know there's like there's some clunky dialogue here and there there's some things that don't really make sense cuz i think he's got like an hour to do things so like it he relives the same hour mm. but it's like he gets a lot of shit done in that hour yeah. It's like way too productive, but I mean, I still gave it a seven. So, oh, this is a movie. I thought this was a TV show. No, 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 it's a movie. All right. Yeah. What is the name again? Naked. Uh, well, I don't want to watch it. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I don't watch eighteen age restriction movies. I just watch PG. I think and if I'm feeling frisky, PG thirteen. I think it's a PG thirteen. Wow, and the name is Naked. Yeah. What if I see somebody's naughty bits? <laughs> I think there's one scene where there's his bum. <laughs> All right, anyway. But that's about it. Yeah. So this week I watched Gone Girl. Okay. It's fucking hectic movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I gave it a seven. Yes. Initially. Right. When I, like two years ago, whenever I watched it. This watch, I bumped it up to a nine. Like oh. most Fincher movies. Right. I've been bumping them up. But like I said, seven and Alien, I bumped back down. Okay. So I don't know if I'm just getting ahead of myself here and I'll bump this back down. Yeah. But I enjoyed it so much. Okay. A lot more than the first time I watched it. Right. Then uh, replacing Bob's Burgers. Mm. You know, I never like announced I'm gonna, I'm watching Bob's Burgers. It's yeah. just like I need a 30 minute comedy or like... Just know. something. Yeah. Sorry. It's like a 20 minute comedy. Yeah. Because like on TV, they add in 10 minutes of ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 20 minutes. Right. I need those, like, if I'm eating lunch or something, I'll put it on. Yeah, and like, you just uh, watch it. I don't want to be doing work while I'm eating. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. What I'm currently watching is mm-hmm. The Simpsons. Oh, nice. It's, you know, like, last year, yes. I watched Star Wars again for the first time in a very long time. Right. And, like, all the feelings just came back. Like, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. This is the best of the best. Yeah. This is the fucking juice, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like sometimes, not all the time, sometimes mm. something, insert extremely popular thing in here, <laughs> <laughs> is popular for a reason, right? Yeah. It's 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 genius, right. right? Everything, it's, I'm laughing so much. Yeah. It's crazy how much I'm loving it. There is yeah. a reason it's the longest running show on yeah. TV. But, well, the common opinion yeah. is that the first 10 seasons are good. Yeah. The rest are awful. Oh. So, <laughs> okay. anyway, then Oppenheimer came out on streaming this weekend. Mm. I didn't rewatch it. I just watched selected scenes. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Like, every scene with Downey Jr. Yeah. Playing Strauss. Yeah. And every, ju- every c- scene of Einstein yeah. playing himself. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah those are my recommendations so nice watch up now if you haven't that's my mm. that's my number one movie of the year I hope Downey Jr. wins best supporting he should yeah he best, should both best director and best picture to Nolan mm. it's yeah, yeah it's the juice anyway I, uh, are we done yet yeah? I've also been watching Avatar re-watching it you know uh, <laughs> The Last Airbender not uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, when you said rewatching it, that doesn't imply like you watch one movie. It, uh, yeah, I assume there was you know a TV series. Yeah, yeah, because they have a live action coming out soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but in preparation, I can for see the your mind. Action. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I was tutoring my kids this week. Yes. Uh, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked them like. What movies do you guys watch? Right. 
and somebody well, apparently they watch a lot of horror movies oh but, oh <laughs> one girl put her hand up and said avatar 2 sir <laughs> and I'm like i had like a bemused look on my face <laughs> and somebody else shouted sir it's the one with the blue <laughs> I'm like oh, thank you <laughs> thank you for telling me <laughs> yeah anyway yeah i i just it it's one of those shows where like i look past its flaws there are flaws of course there are but it i just i can look past them because it it's just i love it so much and yeah i think listener you should definitely go All watch right. avatar can we do chat yep well thank you for listening please remember to rate review subscribe give a like etc give two likes or three importantly it needs to be a five star review has to be although give us a negative review i don't care <laughs> just, <laughs> just give us a review yeah just give us a fucking review <laughs> you know <laughs> we need some interaction yeah, bro although um, Please subscribe on Patreon to listen to our movie commentaries. Yeah. This week will be Captain Marvel 2019. Yep. Uh I think it's, you know, we're talking about Captain Marvel from DC, yes. now known as Shazam. Yes. In 2019 both the first Shazam movie and Captain Marvel came out. Hmm. This year both the sequel to Shazam and the sequel to Captain Marvel. Came out. <laughs> it's very like <laughs> they work they're moving in parallel. Yeah. Anyway, you can find all our links at paceup.com. That's p a i c i p.com. Please tell a friend and tell that friend to tell a friend. Tell a family member. Tell everyone. Goodbye. Cheerio. Au revoir.